If there's anyone watching who's a fan of fantasy literature, you may recognise a tree behind me. Anyway, you may recognise it because the Lord of the Rings movies were such big hits. It's the White Tree of Condor. Um, I'm not going to do a video about Lord of the Rings. There are 50 billion of those, I should think, by now. However, the reason I put it up there is that Lord of the Rings is generally regarded as a seminal work of fantasy fiction, although my own view is it doesn't get that recognition in academics. So, of course, where you'll get academics are still tumming their noses at it and who kind of pass over it, and some of them are reluctant to deal with it at all or include it in course material. But the Lord of the Rings touched off um, a wave of people who tried to copy it, um, its success. Uh, most of the imitators, well, really weren't up to the task or churned out derivative stuff that's at best vaguely readable. However, there were people who actually produced their own visions that were equally interesting or well worth a read. I think one of the more superior attempts was this, The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams. I also think Tad Williams is a heck of a lot better writer than George R.R. R. Martin. And he has a, and he actually finishes his books, which is means if you read this, it finishes, and there are follow ups which also finish. Um, well, that's the plot summary be below. It takes part place as often with these kind of fantasy books on a rough analog to what to Earth, the world of Austin Ard. You can view as a kind of rough summary of a, a medieval Earth. You have sort of the Sidiah who are the Sithi, where he's obviously drawing those from a Celtic myth of the she. You have the Norns and the Darrows and Niskis. Again, quite a lot of that's nicked out of Celtic myth and Norse myth. But he does go somewhere interesting with it if you keep reading it. Um, it plays on particularly, it looks like it's a standard fantasy fiction thing at points but it often twists the perspective it often twists your expectations it often sort of um, involves the hero's tale being twisted it does play with the whole idea of joseph campbell's the hero's journey which you find in in fantasy literature generally but well you can't really get away from that whatever you do it's part of fantasy literature you may think you will. You may think you're the great writer that will get away with it, but there's few people I've seen yet that have. Um, Tad Williams is also worth reading for numerous other books, including, let's find his bibliography. This one's a bit dated. Um, if I find it, Otherland. This is science fiction and was set in a virtual in a reality world. Some of this has got a bit dated due to, well, the fact if you write about virtual reality, um, some of reality will, will outstrip you. However, it's still well worth a read, and they've still got points and comments that it makes on virtual reality that are relevant to now. It would be rather nice if someone adapted Memro Sotry on Thorn, although I imagine it would take a rather huge budget to do it. Well, they would be rather better than the unspeakable rings of power, which is is awful on, on many fronts. If I was forced to review rings of power, I, I might be here till the till the end of time, I think, doing it. I think the mountain the misty mountains in Tolkien's work would probably have worn down. I'd have so much to say about it. Tad Williams is a a far better writer, I think, than anyone working on that show, where they wasted apparently something approaching a billion dollars. How I don't know. Um, I do recognize in that book, he also has a, a rather minor work about a cat. If I could find that on his bibliography. Oh, yes, Tail Chaser's song which is done from the point of view of a cat. If you like cats, and most people like cats, and if you don't like cats, I, I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> very simple. Um, it's done through the eyes of a cat, and it's a, a really nice short book. He followed it up with a few more books, but you can read this one on its own, and it's a perfectly self-contained story. 
that's my short short book recommendation for the day. I thought it might make a change from soup recipes or me having political battles with with people.